Hi, I'm Weston Lombard. I'm in my orchard in Southeast Ohio, early June, and I wanted to do a mulberry identification guide. This video will help us distinguish between Morris rubra, Morris alba, and hybrids of the two. Um, so I'm just a amateur mulberry enthusiast, but uh, starting to get a pretty good handle on identification here. So I'm going to share what I've learned with you all um, and we'll include some links to helpful documents in the comments. Um, so this tree here is a uh, Morris Alba. It's just a seedling tree that was planted by birds and I've let it grow because it has decent fruit. Um, there are several distinguishing factors of Morris Alba. Um, the leaves, you can see, have this glossy sheen to them, which is a great giveaway. Also, um, they're not very rough textured. They're pretty smooth, especially on the top. Um, another distinguishing feature is the berries, uh, despite the name, are not necessarily white. Um, these ones have like a, a black berry um, at the ripe stage, so, you know, they're, they're white getting darker and darker until they're ripe. Um, some Morris Alba actually do have white berries. If a tree has a white berry, very good chance it is a Morris Alba. If it has a red berry, doesn't mean it's a Morris Rubra, a red mulberry. It could be a Morris Alba. The fruit of Alba can be purple, pink, black, white. Um, so that is not actually a distinguishing characteristic. Um, the fruit typically though, is more uh, rounded and often smaller um, on Alba than Rubra and it's born in these clusters so there's like three or four berries coming out of the same same spot here um, so there's usually more fruit clustered closer together which is a great quality and makes for easy picking um, with Rubra there's usually a single fruit coming out from like each leaf axle where the leaf comes off the branch there's usually one fruit coming out of there um so again this is alba you can also look at the bark um it's almost you can almost see a little orange hue to it um especially like like right there that's that's really characteristic um Yeah, but the bark is quite different. So here's the bark of an Alba. And I'm gonna step over here real quick. And this is the bark of a Rubra. Um, so this, the bark, as it gets bigger, it's starting to, to peel a little bit and considerably different bark. Um, I've actually grafted a hybrid tree onto this male Morris rubra, so we're gonna look at the leaves of a different a different rubra tree. Um, that's the other thing that complicates identification is Morris rubra and Alba easily um, hybridized. So you'll get trees that are a mix of the two. Um, this tree is more characteristically rubra. Um, rubra can, like Alba, can have a bunch of different leaf shapes. Um, this shape in particular is more common of rubra, and I think it's more common of young trees, and the leaf shape can change as the tree matures. Um, also, this one only has one little fruit on it, and you can see it coming out just singly from that one leaf axle. Um, the fruit of rubra is typically skinnier and longer. Um, and often much better tasting. Um, but rubra, you can feel it, it's like sandpaper. Um, it sticks very easily to your shirt. Um, another distinguishing characteristic, here's a document from University of Purdue, and it tells you to look at the leaf margins. So I've got on the left here is the rubra on the right here is the alba um, so here's an alba 
you can see it's sort of more rounded leaf margins at the end. These are rounded, not pointy. And then if you look at the rubra here, it sort of comes to points at the end. And you can really see that. And definitely the shininess is a giveaway. So this is sort of a dull green, and this is a shiny, shiny green, glossy. Okay, so now we're gonna go look at a hybrid and see why it can be difficult to tell. So this um, is a selection I've uh, got from a friend. It's called Kit Parker, and it has some characteristics of rubra and some of alba. Um, the leaves are fairly hairy and will stick to my shirt. If I put it in my mouth, I feel the fuzz, uh, but not as much. The berries are long um, and often born uh, singly from the leaf axle. The fruit is super tasty and complex tasting. The alba can be sort of bland. Um, but the reason why do I, I suspect that it's got alba genetics because sometimes the fruit is clustered like this and there can be quite a bit of it and some of them are sort of plump and long. Um, so this tree combines some of the best characteristics of alba and rubra and often the best trees are hybrids because they've got high production, good tasting berries, um, and so things like Illinois Everbearing and Silk Hope, um, I think Everbearing trees are almost always hybrids. Mm, super good. Let's look at the leaf margins of this tree up close. So it's sort of pointy, yeah, but not that much. And there's a little bit of sheen, and it's pretty smooth on the top side of the leaf. And just a little, a little papery, fuzzy on the bottom side. Um, so the only way to tell for sure is send this in for genetic testing, and we can figure out if it is a pure rubra, or likely a hybrid. Um, I'm going to stop by one more rubra tree. Uh, you can see a few fruit up here. Um, I came by earlier and this one had male flowers as well. And so you'll see here, these are old male flowers that have dried. Um, so mulberry trees can have all female flowers, all male flowers, and sometimes both, and sometimes they switch. Um, so it can be different from year to year. Um, only trees with female flowers will make fruit, and typically those with female flowers stay female for most of their lives, if not all of their lives. So we're gonna go check out some other trees now. This is another Alba seedling, so dense clusters of fruit all through the tree, ton of fruit. Um, the taste is pretty bland. Leaves, typical of seedling Alba, are sort of small compared to Rubra. And again, you can really see the glossiness. They almost shine in the light. Um, Great wildlife tree, but the birds will spread it all over and it'll pop up um, in your fence rows, along the road, anywhere it can. Um, so it is considered invasive. However, it doesn't form pure stands or really outcompete um, other trees. So it's not a problem the way a lot of invasive species are. It doesn't drastically change the ecology of the ecosystem, and a lot of birds and mammals do love the fruit, and it's highly nutritious. 
Um, the male trees produce a ton of pollen, which can be very bothersome for people with allergies. Um, female trees, however, the only real problem is the birds will gorge themselves and poop everywhere. Um, but all around, I like having them. We'll check out a few more. Here's another alba tree. Um, this one has more variable leaf shape, and even some of these ones that are often typical of rubra, but you can really see the shine to the leaf is a dead giveaway. This tree is a Illinois everbearing. Um, it's most often listed as a hybrid. Um, you can see the leaves have some glossiness to them, and it feels pretty smooth on the top, but a little rough on the bottom. It's also got these more elongated berries, typical of rubra, and you can see they're generally coming out one per leaf axle there. Um, so each time there's a leaf coming off a twig, there's a berry underneath, which is more typical of rubra. And if there's a lot of leaves in one area, there'll be a bunch of fruit there as well. Um, but the fruit gets quite long and is super tasty and delicious. Um, so likely a hybrid because of the shininess of the leaves give it away. This is another tree I've selected for my property and have been propagating. Also, I believe a hybrid, shiny on top, rough on the bottom. In the sunlight, you can sort of see the shimmer to the top. A um, little rough on the bottom. Fruits often born singly again from the leaf axles. And uh, nice long fruit with really complex flavor. Quite delicious. Um, leaves getting pretty big. And margins slightly rounded and a little pointed. This is another alba. Um, glossy, shiny leaves. Huge leaf, though. Um, often the cultivars, um, maybe because they are bred for silk production, um, have these large leaves compared to the wild alba, typically has smaller leaves. So leaf size, not necessarily an indicator, but very shiny, fairly smooth, even on the bottom, almost shiny on the bottom as well. Um, so this one, likely pure alba. And we'll zoom in on the bark here. Let's try this berry. This is Ukrainian giant. Mm, okay, okay fruit. Um, that's the first one it's made. It's only a one year old graft. So we'll see what happens with that tree. And here is an alba that actually has white fruit. So even as the fruit matures, it stays this white color. Typically these have the most bland flavor, sometimes really sweet, um, but definitely not complex like a rubra. Here's the final leaf roundup, starting with the rubra here. Nice pointy leaf margins there. Stick it out in the sun. Dull, dull color. Not a lot of sheen. Quite furry on top and bottom. Next we've got the alba, rounded leaf margins at the edge. Stick it out in the sun, quite glossy, reflecting a lot of sunlight on the top and sheen on the bottom. Doesn't stick to my shirt at all. Next we've got the hybrid. Um, leaf margin is not super pointy, but a little bit more than the pure alba. The leaf is big, like a rubra. Stick it out in the sun. Dull, dull sheen. It's got a little bit of it. Underside, a little bit of sheen. 
does stick more or less. So a little furrier, but not like the pure rubra right on there. Um, I hope this was helpful. Please leave comments. I'm still learning. Hope we can all figure this out together. Check out the Morse Rubra Search and Rescue Contest. We've got a Facebook event and Growing Mulberry in Temperate Climates Facebook group. Um, thanks a lot.